This time I'm ready to see the salvation of the Lord. This time I am ready for you to prove that your word is mighty. All things. So it's prayer time. Mount Charity, those on the line, whatever it is in your heart, whatever you are asking God for, right now begin to just pray and thank God. Right in your own, in your own space, in your own way. Without pomp and circumstance. Without pomp and circumstance. God, I thank you. God, I know you're going to do it. God, I lay it at your feet. Lord, whatever it is, finances, I need a job, money, relationships, my mind. I've been having these dreams. I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. Everything, whatever it is. God, we come to you right now. Heavenly Father, just thanking you for being God all by yourself. God, we worship you in spirit and in truth, knowing that everything that we need, you know the need and you can meet the need, God. So we lay those things, those deep, deep things that are in the back of our heart, we lay them at your feet, God. Lord, we're asking that you show up in our situation, that you show up in our lives, that you show up like you did for those in the Bible and for testimonies that we've heard with our family and friends. That is the God that we're calling on, Jehovah Jireh, the God, our provider. God, we need you. God, I pray over everyone that is sick from the top of their heads to the sole of their feet that are looking for healing, that are looking for you to make them whole. God, work, move like never before, God. Lord, we need you, God, in our families. We need you on our jobs. We need you in our households. We need you in our neighborhoods. We need this world needs you, Jesus. So God, give us strength so that we can go ye therefore and teach all nations and baptize them in the Father, name and the Holy Ghost. God, that we can do the work that you called us to do, God. Help us, Lord. Prepare the way, Father God. Strengthen those who are weak, God. Lord, we need you. For those who are carrying on in the fast, Lord, give us strength. Allow us to see the end of this thing, God. For we are going to run this race with expectation, God. We are waiting to see you at the end of this thing, in the middle of this thing. Right now, God, show up. Lord, I pray over the house of Mount Charity. God, that you continue to prepare us to be a beacon that shines light in this dark world. God, I pray over our pastor and our first lady, Father God. Asking that you give them strength, God, that you continue to walk with them and, and talk with them and show them the vision, God, that you have set before them. But God, not only just give them the vision, but send the helpers, God, so that we can make this thing happen in the name of Jesus. For the kingdom is at hand, God. So God, we thank you. God, I pray right now for anyone on the sound of my voice that is struggling with finances. We've got things going on that we know nothing about. They're too afraid to ask for help. So God, I ask right now in the name of Jesus that you make a way out of no way. That you make a way out of no way. Miracle signs and wonders are your portion, God. We know that you can do it, Lord. So God, we give it all to you, Lord. God, we bless you. For all those things that people have on their minds and in their hearts, God, we lay it at your feet for we know that you are able. And in all things, we'll be mindful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for you are the Lord of lords. You are our strength. You are perfect. You are omnipresent. You are God that is with us. You are El Shaddai. You are Abba Father. You are the bright and morning star. You are the lily in the valley. God, we call on you right now, Jesus, because you are the true and living God, and there is no one else like you. So, Lord, we lay it at your feet. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. Now, you, you, you see the title, right? Okay, so we about to go to church. <laughs> All I want y'all to do, Mount Charity, is just clap your hands. That's it. Here we go. Put your hands together. I want to hear it. When you're lonely and your heart is filled with despair, remember God cares. God cares for you. And 
And when you're in doubt and you can't see your way out, he'll see you through. Oh, oh, oh. 
name is Jesus. 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 Help me. Jesus. Call him. Jesus. If you Jesus. know him. Jesus. Help me. Jesus. Call him. Jesus. If you Jesus. know him. Jesus. Try it. Jesus. Try it. Jesus. Try it. Jesus. Try it. Jesus. I need you. Jesus. Right now. Jesus. I need you Jesus. right now. Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Jesus. Hey. Oh, how precious. precious. Oh, how precious. 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 Jesus. Jesus. Everybody stand to your feet. If you know that the name of Jesus is precious, if you know that if you keep on calling on the name of Jesus, things have to change. My life has to change. My mind has to change. My situation has to change. Just call on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah. Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus, 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 hallelujah. Somebody give him glory, shout hallelujah, hallelujah. He's my lily in the valley, my bright and morning star. He's a wheel, in the middle of a wheel, it's Jesus, Jesus. Jesus! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hey! You can't call on his name. And not get me excited. Hallelujah! He's the one who saved me. He's the one who changed me. He's the one who turned me around. He's the one who saved me from my own self. He's the one who save me from self-pity. He's the one who got me some money in my pocket. He's the one who got food on my table. He's the one who gave me the activity of my life. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor say, it's Jesus, baby. It's Jesus, baby. It's Jesus. do me one favor. I want you to creep over to your neighbor and just look at your neighbor and say, you want to know how I made it? Tell him it was Jesus. That must have been the wrong neighbor. Go over to your other neighbor and say, if you want to know how I made it, say it was Jesus.
Touch your neighbor and say, you better go ahead and worship. Touch your neighbor and say, you better go ahead and worship. You better go ahead and worship. You better go ahead and worship. I see people getting free. I see people getting delivered. Don't spectate, participate. Tell somebody say, I'm gonna get this off of me. I'm gonna get this off of me. everything I need. If you ain't tried him, you ought to just call on his name. Say, Jesus. I see things happening. Say, Jesus. I see deliverance happening. Say, Jesus. All you got to do is call on his name. All you got to do is call on his name. All you got to do is call on his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah should have been me but Jesus could have been me but Jesus would have been me but Jesus of the Lord, he'll show you some stuff. Saw my baby there worshiping. And she is a student at Michigan State University. She's worshiping when I could be going to a visual. Last night they had a visual of the young girl. They went with candles lit for the young girl that died at Michigan State. God gave me a visual that it could have been me. Woo! Seen and unseen dangers. My grandmother used to say, seen and unseen dangers. Things I ain't even thought about. God didn't cover and work it. Y'all, we take grace for granted. Grace is his unmerited favor. We take his favor for granted. That he put his favor over my daughter and said, you can't even be in the vicinity. At that. He's kept you. He's covered you. He's even covered your loved ones so it wouldn't affect you. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God. 
praise. Amen. Amen. Listen, we're going to go into this word. Amen. I pray that the Lord will bless us to get to this place. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 22, verses 1 and 2. We're in the New Living Translation. Amen. Amen. 1 Samuel 22. It's on the screen for us. We can read it together in concert. Since we don't have a response of reading, we can read together in concert. Let's read together. So David let Gab and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Soon his brothers and all other joined him there. Then others began coming, men who were in trouble or in debt or who was just discontented until David was the captain of about 400 men. Amen. And that is the reading of the text. Amen. Amen. I wanted to preach from the simple subject. I'm not retreating. I'm regrouping. I'm not retreating. I'm regrouping. Amen. I'm not retreating. I'm regrouping. Touch your neighbor and say, I ain't retreating. Baby, I'm regrouping. <laughs> oh, Heavenly Spirit, we need your help. My brothers and sisters, to retreat means to fall back when your enemy has you beat and you pull back to save yourself from total casualty. The dictionary declares that retreating is to withdraw from enemy forces as a result of their superior power or after a defeat. It also says it's the act of moving back or withdrawing. Many people think that because you've moved back this month that they've defeated you. But how many people can attest that that's not my position? God is restraining me and God is has me in a holding place and God has allowed me to regroup. Uh, in this text you'll find David running to the cave of Adullam after leaving Gath, acting like a madman to save his own life. The reason David is on the run is because the current king, Saul, is trying to kill him. But the question is, why? How many people know that the enemy is after you because of your anointing? <laughs> Uh, the only reason why Saul was after David is because he could recognize what others couldn't. Jesse couldn't see the anointing on David. David's brothers couldn't see the anointing on him. Jonathan couldn't see the anointing on him. But touch your neighbor and say, but the enemy could. Some of the reasons the people hate you and have a problem with you is because they can see what others can't see about you. As a matter of fact, you don't even know the potential you have and they see it and they're jealous because they think you're going to take their spot with that anointing. Is there anybody in here that can say in this season of my life, I understand now why people don't like me and why people roll their eyes when I come in the room and why people just disassociate themselves with me. It ain't because I'm all that great. It's because they see something on me that even I can't see. Somebody in here need to tell your neighbor, stop getting upset when people don't like you and stop being upset when people act like they don't like your name or don't like anything about you. They see something in you that you can't even see. God has anointed David to take 
Saul's place. And the reason why he's upset is because he see the same anointing that was once on him, now on this boy. Is there anybody in here that can give God a praise and say, I thank you, God, that you allowed the enemy to see it. That's the reason why I'm going through so much hell right now. That's the reason why the divorce is killing me. That's the reason why death is killing me. That's the reason why I'm going through some of the struggles I'm going through. It's because the, the anointing on my life is trying to raise up in this season. And God is trying to tell you the more trouble you have, the more anointing. Uh, somebody touch, touch your neighbor and say, I'm oily in this season. The reason why I got so much trouble is because I got oil coming down. I got the anointing on me. I got things that God is about to do through me. Things that eyes haven't seen, that ears haven't heard, that nothing can even enter into the hearts of man. What God is about to do through me, that's the reason why they hate me. Woo. Reason why I'm a problem for you is because you see me in positions you should be in. You see me walking in a business that you wanted to start. You see me with a husband that you wanted. <laughs> you see me with a wife you wish you had. Uh, you ever have somebody try to calculate up how you ended up with the person you ended up with? Baby, it's my anointing. Huh? How did I end up with the life I ended up with? It's baby, it's the anointing. How are you still alive and breathing after everything you've been through? Baby, it's the anointing. And you got to stop apologizing for what you didn't pour on yourself. Check the story, Phineas. David, when Samuel comes to the house, doesn't even show up. They have to go get him to anoint him. Most of the people, watch this, most of the people that get hate on the most is the people that didn't even ask for it. I'm preaching up in here. Most of the people that, how many people say, listen, if you want this anointing, you got to understand that the anointing comes with trouble, that the anointing comes with trials and tribulations and haters and people that don't like you, that people that'll leave you desolate, people that'll say that they'll be there for you, but as soon as trouble comes, they disappear. You got to understand this anointing comes with a cost, and if you want it, you can have it, but baby, you wasn't built for it. That's the reason why you just jealous of it, because God said, this is was came for you and you alone. You can't handle my anointing. Kurt, he had it and couldn't handle it. Saul had the anointing and couldn't handle it. So now he's trying to kill the person who could. They trying to kill you because you can handle what they couldn't handle. God, I'm about to speak prophetically. Somebody going to hate you because you're going to be able to handle the husband they couldn't handle. They're going to come to you and say, uh, when well, he was with me, he couldn't know, baby, because yo, you couldn't handle him. I can I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. Derek, I got to get out of here. Uh, 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 they jealous. They jealous because God gave them what they coveted. God gave you what they once had. Uh, but here's the funny thing. Keisha, here's the funny thing. Instead of using the anointing on your life to their advantage, Instead of getting close to the anointing to benefit from the anointing, instead of harnessing your anointing so it can keep us going up, <laughs> they choose to hate on it, discourage it, and talk about it, and try to destroy it. Is there anybody in here that can say, well, you need to learn how to push my anointing instead of trying to suppress <laughs> Do it make sense that you try to suppress what's helping you? Just because you're not the lead singer, 
Just because your name ain't on the business? Baby, I don't care. As long as I get a profit sharing check, baby, keep on going. If you're going to be the face of the company that's making me millions, I don't care that my face ain't on it. See, the reason why they covet is because they want to be in the forefront, and that's not their... David has to deal, watch this, um, David has to deal with people who's coming after him to kill him for something he didn't ask for. Right now, in this fast, I feel the power of the anointing on my life. But baby, the heat that come with the attacks of the enemy. Uh, What's funny about David is that he was dealing with the challenges before his anointing, but not like this. In other words, I was before my fast, I was dealing with struggles. But touch your neighbor and say, not like this. <laughs> if you don't realize you in spiritual warfare and that spiritual warfare is real, then you'll realize it in the fast. If you ain't eating fast food, now the job has a luncheon with free fast food, and that's all they serve. Uh, you, if you're not drinking pop, Now the restaurant you go to, the server just so happens to bring an extra soda to the table and say, I won't put this on your bill. If you're not watching TV now, a tragic incident happens where it seems like these uh, apps that I use on a normal basis ain't refreshing enough and you have to turn on the TV. If you're not on social media, now all of a sudden people are sending you text messages with links that go directly to social media. Baby, and the, the attacks on the anointing of God and the enemy knows that if you tap into the anointing and if you go further in this fast and if you get more powerful in this fast, he knows that the enemy is in trouble. That's the reason why he's attacking you in the way he is. That's the reason why you think it's just a a happenstance that, uh, that people are coming at you with these things, but no baby, it's spiritual warfare and it's trying to stop you from taking the vow that you made unto God and say, on these 28 days, I'm doing this and these 28 days, I'm not doing this. These days, I'm not doing this. Every time it seems like you try to do something for God, here comes the flesh. Here comes the opposition. Here comes all the opportunities in the world. Because what the world wants to do is suppress your anointing because he knows if you could just tap into it. Yeah. Huh. Y'all, the Bible says that the devil goes to and fro accusing the brethren. Here we are thinking, oh, well, I just took a sip of pop. The devil said, aha. There you go, I got him. Oh, I just told a little white lie. The devil says, aha. I got him. And he keep going back and forth with every little thing. And what God is telling you to do is to keep on going forward even though you might have failed. You might have keep on. uh, The real failure is to stop moving forward. Let your neighbor say, I might have a stumbling block. I might have stumbled and failed. I might have scratched up my knees this month. I might have did some things that uh, I might have to go get some uh, stitches this month. But God, thank you uh, that you gave me the power and the unction to still get up. Is there anybody that can say, in this season, I just can't let, I can't stay down. Baby, I just keep bouncing back. I just can't stay in a down position. I just keep on getting up and saying, God, if you woke me up this morning, that means I'm a candidate for a miracle. I know what's about to happen. I know something's about to move. I know something's about to shake. I know something is about to give way because I got up and my feet hit the ground. Is that anybody in here that can say, listen, I know I'm a, a, a issue to the enemy because when I wake up, when my feet hit the ground, the enemy better know that I got my enemy up under my feet. He said, you shall be a stepping stool. He said, I'll take your haters and Make them a stepping stool for you. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm on my way. Y'all, y'all, sit on down. Sit on down. I'm trying to get out of here. But all right, we got to go. Uh, uh, but they're stepping stools. 
But it's our perspective, Mike. Uh, it's our perspective. Because uh, it's meant to stop us. But what we don't understand, what the enemy meant for evil. Can I give y'all an analogy? Here I go. If I try to walk forwards, hear me? Y'all see me? If I try to walk forward and I stump my toe, if I'm trying to go forward, I'm not going nowhere and I'm frustrated and I'm irritated because I'm trying to go forward. You trying to go forward when God trying to take you up. Can I, can, I, can I make it live for y'all? When you're dealing with people and, and issues that are stumbling blocks, it's an opportunity for you to go higher. <laughs> I know you got a court case. and you, I know you got issues. I know uh, they're trying to take your car. I know they're trying to take your house. I know the money is funny and your change is strange. But touch your neighbor and say, it's time to go up. I know the kids are acting crazy. I know it seemed like I can't find a man. It seemed like every time I try to find a good candidate, they turn out to be a bad candidate. But touch your neighbor and say, it's time to go up. No, it seemed like the relationship I'm in seemed like it's going back and forward and up and down. It's a roller coaster ride of emotion. And it seemed like as soon as our relationship get good, then we have issues that make our relationship go bad. It seemed like the enemy ain't worried about nobody else's relationship but mine. But touch your neighbor and say, it's time to go up. <laughs> we got to change our perspective, Kurt. We be sitting there talking about, woe is me, my toe is hurting because I can't go forward. God said, because it wasn't meant for you to go forward. It was meant for you to go up. <laughs> Y'all got to get to the text. I ain't even touched this text yet. Uh, uh, back to the text. The Bible says that David goes to the cave of Adullam. So I had to ask God, what did the cave of Adullam mean? Or what did it represent, B? It wasn't a place to hide. Because the Bible says as soon as he went to the cave, all of his family, so he couldn't have been hiding. Uh, it wasn't a place for him to die. Because David doesn't just lay there and ask God to take his life. So God, what is the cave? Bigger, I'm here with you, right? We, we, we good, right? We here. A cave is a place where if I'm going to go down fighting, I'm going to go down fighting knowing my surroundings. <laughs> David said, I couldn't see my back and my sides in Gath. He said, so I go to Adullam and everybody that come in I have a visual because it's a light at the tunnel. And in order for them to come at me, they got to come at me one by one. They can't come at me from all sides. They got to come through the cave. But here's the thing. When you look at the text, if you go back to chapter 21, you'll find out that he goes to the priest and he asks the priest for a weapon. He says... Uh, the only thing here is Goliath's sword. <laughs> so he was in the cave. He could have been in the cave to die because he had a sword in his hand. Touch your neighbor and say, in this season, if I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out fighting. Huh? If the enemy going to take me out, he going to have to take me out fighting. Huh? And the only reason why I'm in the cave, huh? the only reason why I had to bag back huh? is because I needed to know my surroundings. Huh? And everything that come at me got to come at me at once. Huh? You ain't going to bum rush me in this season. Huh? You ain't going to gang up on me in this season. In the spirit, you got to come at me one at one. Huh? And that's the reason why he went to the cave and he said, I'm going to fight. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die 
not fighting. Is there anybody in here that can say, in this season, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die fighting. I'm from Joy Road, baby. I ain't going out like that. I'm from Detroit. I ain't going out like that. I'm from the west side. I ain't going out like that. I'm from the east side. I ain't going out like that. Baby, if I'm going to go out, I'm going out fighting. Here's the, here's the revelation, though, Lisa. Here's the revelation why. Good to see you. Uh, but he let him fight with his enemy's device. <laughs> he was armed, see. With his arm, with his with, with his enemy sword. Derek, in other words, I got to make this live, Kurt. They can't, they can't pick this up on 96. They got to get this now. In other words, I'm backed up with cuss words. <laughs> I'm backed up with capping. I, I used to roast all the time. I, I'm from Joy Row. That's all we did was roast. I, I, I know how to cut you. I, I got my gun and my holster. I, I, I got your enemy's weapon, but God says put away your... back in a corner with my enemy's weapon and God says I don't need you to fight I need you to regroup y'all y'all ain't shouting because y'all don't know what regrouping is <laughs> uh, uh, let me explain uh uh, in order to regroup, I looked up the word. The word means to regroup military forces. To reorganize for a renewed activity and a renewed strategy. Because I can't fight this fight with the same thing that was trying to kill. I can't fight like they fight. The reason why God got you in the cave is because what he needs you to do is regroup, Beck. He needs you to regroup and say, God, if you don't help me, I'm going to fight them with the same weapon they fought me with. Because, baby, I'm tired. Huh? I'm tired of running. Huh? I'm tired of dodging. Huh? I'm tired of acting like I'm crazy to get out of situations. Baby, I'm a born fighter, and I know how to fight. But, God, you ain't released me to fight them yet. So I need you to do something because I'm about to go after them with everything that I have in me. God said, it's time to regroup in the cave. It's time for you to re-strategize in the cave. It's time for you to get a new strategy from him in the cave. Is there anybody in here that can tell your neighbor that Jesus had a same cave experience? It was at the Garden of Gethsemane. He was ready to do what we wanted to do. But he said to them, he says, not my will, but thy will be done. He comes from the garden and the people that are supposed to be watching him are fast asleep. Is there anybody here that sees like the people around you I sleep on your condition but every time I go to you I know your condition I help your condition I pray over your condition I fast for your condition but when it's time for me you go to sleep on my condition when I gotta struggle you go to sleep he tells them to sleep on sleep on I gotta go and regroup and see what God want me to do God says I ain't gonna say a mumbling word huh? because the earth was before the earth was formed huh? the bible says huh? that the lamb was slain huh? is there anybody here huh? that can say you know your purpose huh? you just gotta regroup huh? 
I already anointed you king. David, all you got to do is regroup. He got his 400 men at the regrouping. He got the time with God at the regrouping. Is there anybody here that can say Jesus died for, oh, for me and you? And he died on Calvary. But three days later, he got up with all power. All power in his hands. Somebody shout all power. Say, I'm going to get stronger after this. When I come out of this fast, I'm going to come stronger after this. I'm not going to let it weaken me. I'm going to let it strengthen me. Touch your neighbor. Say, be careful. I'm regrouping. I, 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 I'm re-strategizing. It don't mean that I'm giving up. It just means that I'm giving in to God. Because I want to fight with the enemy sword. I want to fight how they fighting me. But I can't. I can't fight like they fighting me. God won't let me. He's regrouping me. And he's allowing other people to fight for me. Uh, he gets to 400 male and he goes on to take his parents unto Moab says to the king of Moab take care of my take care of my parents I'm about to have to fight because the king has declared war against me the Bible says that he turns around and creates a stronghold and in the stronghold that what you do is you have a quadrant of people that are in front of you that the enemy has to get through to get to you those people were put in place to make David feel more comfortable Y'all, but he didn't have to even lose a single soldier because he allowed Saul and Jonathan to go into a battle and get killed in the battle. So the person who was trying to kill me that I'm all prepared for, God kills them and I don't have to lay a hand on them. Y'all, y'all, we don't understand. Watch this. We don't understand it. We don't have to lay our hands. We don't have to lay hands on nobody. We don't have to explain our situation. We don't have to talk about them. God fights our battles. <laughs> but we got to get to the regrouping phase. We got to regroup. Come on, stand to your feet as we open the doors of Jesus Christ. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm regrouping. I'm not retreating. I ain't been defeated. I ain't forking it over to the enemy. I'm regrouping. <laughs> yes! Declare it. Say, I'm regrouping. Hallelujah. Listen, if there's somebody in here or somebody that's online, that wants to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Today is the day to get saved. Listen, if you've been in a backslidden position, this is a good opportunity to slide right back. If you need a church home, this is a good place to be. We would love to accept you. But this call isn't just about you coming to Mount Charity. This, this call is about you coming to Jesus. Once you come to Jesus, Jesus will lead you where you need to go. But if you hear God speaking to you, heart not your heart. Come hear what the Lord has to say and what he's going to do with your life. I have ministers set up. As a matter of fact, if you feel uncomfortable with coming down, they'll come to you. All you got to do is raise your hand. Say, Pastor, you're talking about me. 
you talking about me, you talking about me, you talking about me. I need help. I need to regroup. Because in this season, I'm, I'm about to retreat. I'm about to give up. I'm about to give in. That's what retreating was, was giving up. To retreat was to give up. But there's a God that has already given you the victory. So there's never a need for you to retreat. Only to back up to regroup. There's somebody in here that has not accepted him and been in a backslidden position where you want to be a member. I ask that you would remain standing while everybody else takes their seat. It's just that simple. Just that simple. Amen. Amen. Mama, you 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 want to come back? Amen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on down here. Come on. This is our own Maryland. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I've been looking for you. I've been calling you. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Amen. Amen. Listen, if there's somebody else that wanted to stand, you can stand at this moment. We're not here to judge you. We're not here to talk about you. But if the Lord is, is placing it on your heart, don't let this time go by. I preached a sermon at the funeral yesterday for our very own beloved Marie Anderson, Connie, effective, effectively known around here. Life is too short. I'd rather have God and not need him than to need him and not have him. Amen. If you hear, hearten not your heart. Amen. Come on, y'all. It's giving time. Amen. It's giving time. Amen. 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 The Lord has blessed us to be able to have something to give. Amen. And we thank God for that. Amen. Amen. We thank God. Listen, I don't know about y'all, but uh, money has been a little tight in this season. But I'm still giving. Because I can't afford not to give. <laughs> Everybody got a thousand excuses, but let me tell you something. It'll always be a thousand excuses. It's called spiritual warfare. <laughs> spiritual warfare. It's always going to be a tight situation. I don't care how much money you have. It's always going to be a tight situation. But you got to trust God and just believe God, not as a debt that you owe, but as a seed that you sow. God, I believe you more than I believe what I have. God will make up the difference. Won't he make up the difference? <laughs> every time, every time, y'all, and some of the craziest ways he'll do it, he'll do it in, in so many different ways. People just walk up to you, give you money, People will bless you. They'll go come to your job and say, hey, oh, oh y'all overpaid me. Because, you know, we, you know, us 
super spiritual people will be going to him like, hey, <laughs> I don't want nothing that don't belong to me. <laughs> Y'all overpay me. They say, oh, no, I'm sorry. We forgot to tell you we gave you a raise. <laughs> I'm just telling you how God moved. You get a check in the mail and you wasn't even expecting it and it'll just be thousands of wait, I didn't, everything that I needed, God gave it. Because he's not a liar and his word will not come back to him void. He said, give and it shall be given. Good measure, press down, Shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. I'm a believer, amen. Amen, amen. Listen, did everybody give already? Did everybody have an opportunity to give? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We give your name glory. 30, 60, 100 fold is what we're asking you to multiply. Multiply this offering and multiply the trust that people have in you, oh God, that they will believe in you and trust in you and just continue to wait on their harvest. We love you, God, and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Somebody say, I got a seed in the ground. <laughs> we got our announcements coming, amen. Praise the Lord, Mount Charity family. Here are your announcements for this week. Our pastor is declaring that this year is the year of new beginnings. Today is the day that God will give you everything new. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. So again, Mount Charity, let's believe God for a new beginning for 2023. Hey family, we want you to save the date for these upcoming events. Beginning in February, Pastor Belk is calling the church to a 28-day fast. This year, we've created different tiers for your walk with Christ. Tier 1, you will fast from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. No social media, no fast food, no television, and you will join the prayer call daily at 6 a.m. Tier 2, the fast begins from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Everything included with Tier 1, plus no gossiping, personal prayer three times a day, Read your Bible verse daily. And then tier three, this fast is 28 whole days, no six to six. Everything from tier two, study a text daily, prepare a two paragraph summary, and send to pastor daily. Please let's do this as a family and let's support one another during this fast. On Wednesday, March the 1st, 2023, we will be having our expectancy fast. During this service, you will be able to praise God for all of the things that he has done for you during the fast. We will have Pastor Frederick Chapman as our guest speaker for that night from New Beginnings Bible Church. And as our guest worship leader, we will have Brother Jay Murray. Please come out and celebrate what God has done for you during this fast. On February 25th, 2023, Works the Works Men's Ministry will be hosting a father-daughter dance from 6 to 10 p.m. This is a free event and you must RSVP with Minister Booker. If you have any questions, you can see Minister Booker after service. Mount Charity, our pastor declared that I'm going to give it to God, trust God, and wait on God. Now you can keep this reminder and purchase a t-shirt for only $30. We would love for everyone to purchase this t-shirt to wear for our expectancy service on March the 1st. The deadline to place your short order is February 15th. Please place your order with Sister Tracy or Sister Michelle Booker. Hey, Mount Charity family, your 2022 giving statements are now ready to be received. If you would like a copy, you can email treasurer at mtcharitymbc.org to receive a copy of your giving statement. Mount Charity, we want to connect with you on various social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and even Snapchat and TikTok. You can also connect with us on our very own Mount Charity Church app, which is in the Apple App Store or in the Google Play Store. Of course, our prayer meeting is every Thursday at 6 a.m. virtually on Facebook, and we want you 
to join us during this time to make the sacrifice and receive a word for that day. Sunday school is every Sunday morning at 930, which is taught by our dynamic ministerial team. And of course, our Sunday morning worship is every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. live on Facebook and in person. Happy birthday to all of those who are celebrating a birthday this week from Pastor Bill and Executive Pastor Bill and the rest of your Mount Charity Church family. Take this time and thank God for letting you see another year. This concludes our announcements. And let's remember to give it to God, trust God, and wait on God. Love on your family and let's make this week a great one in Jesus' name. Man, thank you. Brother Bernard, amen. Amen. We, oh, I'm sorry. Minister Carter. He has accepted his call. Amen. He has accepted his call and will now be one of the ministers in training here at Mount Charity. Amen. Amen. So we about to have the Carter twins. Worse to be reckoned with. Amen. 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 What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. Listen, we want to make sure that this um, daddy-daughter event is amazing. Amen. And, and we want to make sure that um, we support uh, the men's ministry as they're trying their best to do things. Every ministry is trying to do things independent of myself and my wife because we normally have to have our hand in everything. And so we want us to support it so that they can feel like they are doing the right thing. So if you have a daughter, if you have a daughter who has a daddy, uh, if you have a daughter who doesn't have an active father, we have fathers that will step in for them. Amen. We want to make this a great event. Here's the thing. When I asked uh, Minister Booker, who is uh, chairing this event, when I asked him, what was his goal? He said only 10 men was his goal. And I said, we're going to shoot for 20 just in case, you know, but that's not a lot to ask for, amen? That's not a lot, of, lot to ask for. He said he wants 10 men with 10 daughters to, to be able to take care and teach them what it's like to really be treated the right way by a man, amen? Amen. Listen, we got to change the expectations of our daughters who think they just supposed to take anything in any way somebody comes, you supposed to open the door for me, you supposed to take care of me, you huh. you gotta come to me the right way. Amen. And so we want to teach them that. Uh, I want to say happy birthday to all the birthdays. Did anybody have a birthday this week coming up? Lacey. Our praise report. Amen. Amen. She uh, had a scare and thought it was cancerous, but the, she got the report back that it was not. I got your message. Amen. Pray, come on, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet and show everybody what God can do. Amen. Show what God can do. Amen. If you ever had to have a biopsy, you know how scary that is to get that, to get that, uh, that test result back. And to get it back and it say negative, <laughs> won't he do it? <laughs> if he'll do it for you, then that means he'll do it for me. That's why I get excited about other people's deliverance. That just means God ain't shut the door on blessing people. He's still in the blessing business. <laughs> Jesus. So happy birthday to you. Amen. You got the good news on your birthday? Wow. What a birthday gift. Amen. God told her that she was cancer free on her birthday. Listen, you can leave the cake alone. You can leave the, the, you can leave the candles alone. But that, that's a gift beyond any gift. Amen. <laughs> we don't know when to shout. We don't know when to get excited, amen, amen, amen. After doing three funerals, two of them was via cancer. I 
said two out of the three was cancer. To get that kind of report, the church should be in an uproar because we ain't got to bury another member. Hallelujah. Amen. Not to say that, not to say that you're going to be buried just because you have a diagnosis of cancer. We've got some members in here that'll give you their testimony that they had. Had. Yeah, past tense. I said bye-bye to cancer. My God allowed me to say bye-bye to cancer. Amen. Amen. So that's not the final thing, but I'm just looking at what God can do. Amen. Amen. Listen, we got to get out of here. Is there any other special announcements that I need to make? Amen. Amen. I'm always looking to her for the... Bless God for my wife. I just thank God for her. Amen. The politician, the woman. <laughs> Amen. The multifaceted, multi-talented, multi-gifted. My baby, my boo. Man, y'all don't understand the blessing of not being in competition, baby. Let me tell you something. Everything she do is just like it's me and her doing it. Amen. Amen. I, I'll be like, go, baby, go, go, go. Amen. Because it's, it, it's fulfilling the will of God. Amen. She's doing what God has called her to do. And she's always busy. Amen. Are you texting me? Okay, no. She normally be texting me like, uh, wrap it up. <laughs> no, she be telling me what I need, what I done forgot. Amen. So I thank God for all of you. Um, what else do we have? Oh, y'all, this expectancy service is going to be off the charts. I'm praying expectations expectations. I have expectations. I didn't sacrifice for nothing. <laughs> I mean, you can say it's been a sacrifice. <laughs> I didn't sacrifice for nothing. I didn't toil for nothing. I didn't fight for nothing. Amen. But this about to be the release. I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to do one more day. I'm going to do one more day. It's the first, so I'm going to go ahead and finish my fast after the expectancy service is over. That's just me. This me. <laughs> Y'all are hilarious. Real. Did you, did you hear this? Do you hear this? They like, you go ahead, Pastor. We trying to make it a day 21. We trying to make it a day. <laughs> he said, regroup, my brother, regroup. <laughs> you trying to be super spiritual. We, we trying to just make it. Amen. On broken pieces. Amen. <laughs> so, uh, expectancy service. Uh, we have dynamic pastor. Fred Tra Chapman, Frederick Chapman, amen, he's going to, and Jay is going to, what is his last name? Jay Murray is going to uh, be our musical guest, amen, on Wednesday, March 1st, amen, we're starting at 6.30, 6.30, oh, it's up there, oh, and then our, we have our expectancy seat, if you want to bring it on that night, or if you want to give it now, but we've been doing the 28, $280 or 2008. Listen, the Bible says you have not because you ask not. Amen. And the Lord placed it in my spirit to put these three tiers up there. Just because you own tier three don't mean you got to give the 2800 I'm just saying that because I'm on tier three. You know, just <laughs> I told you my change are strange. I told you. <laughs> Pastor, put your faith where your mouth at. You know, oh, you know. But... <laughs> 
2,800, uh, 280. Uh, the Lord is just blessing. Somebody's, uh, people are trying to give it, amen, but, you know, that's on you, whatever the Lord place on your heart. Amen. If y'all ready to get out of here, come on, stand to your feet. I'm not covering. Oh, come here, Danielle. Come here. My baby is going back to school today, so I'm going to ask y'all to pray for her. Amen. Come on, ministers. You found them? Anybody else who feel led to come and help us pray, you can come, or you can pray from where you are, amen, but anybody else feel led to come, y'all understand that as parents, you want to protect your children at all costs, at all costs, you want to protect your children, but when they become adults, there's things that you, come on, come on up here. When they become adults, there's things you cannot steer them away from. You can't be around them protecting them at all times. When they're toddlers, you can kind of, you know, you can kind of control that. But when they become adults, how I many know you even more fearful? You have more anxiety when they become adults than when they were children because now they have to face this cruel world who don't care nothing about them. And so we just have to continue to lift our children in prayer, amen, amen. Heavenly Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, that you would touch this here, your child. God, you protected her before. We're counting on you to protect her again. God, place a hedge of protection around her, oh God. God, allow her to know which way to go and where to turn, oh God. God, to hear your voice, oh God, so that you can give her direction, oh God. God, we know, oh God, that she's yours. We've trained her in the way that she should go, God. God, we know that now she's older, now that she's out of our house, oh God, that she will not depart from what's in her belly. God, she will not depart from what has been taught. God, so we ask right now, oh God, that no matter what goes on, no hurt, harm, or danger will come upon her. God, that she will go in the direction that you will have her to go. God, that she will hang around the people that you have her to hang around. That when you give her the spirit of discernment, that she would walk away from those that mean her no good. God, so we ask right now, oh God, God, we're here touching and agreeing, oh God, that you would do it in the name of Jesus. God, that you would lift her up, lift up her spirit, man, and crucify her flesh, oh God. That she will hear you, oh God, and not her flesh. God, we love you. You said cast all of our cares upon you. God, it's not too much we care for more than our children. So we, care, we cast her at your feet. We give her unto you because that's the safest place she could be. We love you, God, and thank you. Now, as we depart from this place, never from your eternal presence. We ask that you would go with us and stand by us. God, this is our regrouping season. We're not retreating. We're not giving up. We're not retiring on our, our blessing. We are going forward. We're regrouping, regathering, re-strategizing, knowing, God, that you have given us the victory already. God, so as we leave, we leave with marching orders to go forth unto a dying world and tell them about a living Jesus. We walk with marching orders, with our breastplate on, with our helmet of salvation on, God, with the sword of the word, oh God. We walk with marching orders to go and do what you have called us to do. Walk with the walkers, ride with the riders, drive with the drivers. Until we meet again, it is in Jesus' name we thank you and do pray. Let every child of God say amen, amen, amen. Man, hug somebody and tell them I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Hallelujah.